welcome to the English with Kirsty podcast from www.englishwithkirsty.com. Here I'll be sharing with you tips, information and other learning resources so that you can improve your business English. episode 191 of the English with Kirsty podcast. So I know I've had a bit of a break recently. Um, the last episode was kind of double length, so if you haven't listened to that, I would recommend that you go back and do that because there were lots of um, good tips and lo- there was a lot of good information in there. Um, but I also got married recently, so I, I took some time off for that. So anyone who knows me or knew me as Kirsty Major, I am now Kirsty Wolf, like the animal. Um, it doesn't change English with Kirsty because that's just my, my first name, but my surname has changed now to Wolf. Um, but to be honest, although I was busy, this isn't the only reason why it took me a bit longer to, to make this episode. I've had the notes for it for some time now, um, but this is advice that I need to take as well. So a part of me was thinking, well, you can't tell other people what they need to do if you're not doing it yourself. And yeah, that was something I needed to think about. So we're talking today about listening but listening to yourself, because that's not often something that we think about. Usually it's listening to, to find out information. Um, we, I spoke in a previous episode about listening to other people so that you can become a better conversation partner because you can't talk to people if you don't know what they're, what they're saying. You have to be a conversation. You have to be willing to listen to them to understand what they're saying. So we've covered that in a previous episode. But today I'm talking about listening to yourself because it's something that rarely comes up in in language courses. If it does, it's talking about listen to yourself so that you can identify pronunciation mistakes and do something about them, which is fine and it can be useful exercise because when we're speaking, we're not always aware of the words that trip us up or the the phonetic sounds that we find more difficult. I think most of the time we, we do know what we find difficult, but... Um, We don't always know what doesn't sound right, but I'm not talking about that today. Um, It's good to look for mistakes, but I think sometimes we focus so much on mistakes that we don't focus on the other parts of learning a language or using a language. So the reason for listening to yourself is because it's good to get used to hearing yourself speaking another language. Because most of the time we're not used to hearing ourselves and listening to ourselves. I've been editing these podcasts for a while. This is episode 191, so I've got used to hearing myself now. It doesn't bother me that much if I hear myself speaking English, unless I say something really stupid. But most of the time I think, yeah, that's that's okay. Um, If there's anything that I want to edit out, I can because these aren't live. But generally, I don't tend to edit them very much because if I made too many mistakes, I'll do it again. And if I'm talking to someone else, then I want it to sound like a, a genuine, normal conversation. But I have a beginner student who has vocabulary in English and German, and if I'm making recordings for her, then I don't particularly enjoy listening to them um, because I'm speaking German. I think, oh, okay, maybe that's not quite as good as a native speaker. Um, I can do that, though. It's, It's not so bad. My language is three and four. My third and fourth languages, I like that even less. Um, And I, I really don't enjoy that. Because we're not used to hearing ourselves speaking, and I think that's that's something that I'm, I want to address here. It's it's good if we can be, or if we can at least get used to it, because I don't think we'll ever really enjoy it. Most people, unless you really love listening to your own voice, I guess some people do, but most people are never going to find it a really fun activity. But it's a good activity to have because we get used to it, and if we get used to it, it's not a strange thing or not a difficult thing. And it will also affect how we behave. If we can feel a bit more comfortable with this, it will affect how we behave in meetings or when speaking to other people in another language. And it's particularly important for new languages. I know most people here are are not beginners um, in terms of learning English, but you may be learning another language. For me, it's particularly important at the moment because I've started a new language um, and I'm not used to hearing myself speaking it. I feel very self-conscious about it because it's new and different Um, and my my language teacher doesn't say that there's a problem with the pronunciation so it's not that I think that it's it's not understandable but it's new 
and for me it's fine if other people are speaking it but I'm not used to hearing my voice speaking those words so it's it's a challenge for me to let other people hear my voice speaking those words as well but as I said most people here certainly learning English it's not a completely new language for you but it can also be relevant if you're an intermediate speaker or even a more advanced speaker if you haven't had much exposure to being with other people or speaking the language or hearing yourself speaking the language. Um, so some people say that speaking is difficult but for other reasons that have nothing to do with speaking like language production if you're if you're learning a new language you may find speaking difficult because it means you have to be quick and spontaneous um, and you can't do that very easily in a new language because you're still translating from your, your main language into the other language and that makes speaking more difficult because you feel under pressure. Um, so part of it is, is language production, but part of it is, is that when you're speaking a language that you're not so confident about, it changes your delivery. Certainly when I'm presenting something, I feel confident when I know what I'm talking about. I think we all do. So if we, if we feel confident in our subject matter and what we're saying, then we can feel more confident about delivering it as well because we know what we have to do, what we have to say, and we know that we're, we're right. <laughs> if you're talking about something and you've researched it, you, you know that it's right, then that can help you to feel confident. But if you're doing that in a different language, sometimes the delivery changes and almost your personality changes because you can be a bit more reserved, a bit more um, shy, even you're just not delivering it in the way that you would normally. And that can affect how you feel about yourself because you think, well, I know I'm not like that normally, but in this situation you are. And that can undermine your confidence a bit. And once your confidence has been undermined, then, then it's like a, a downward spiral. It happens again and again. Um, but part of the problem that we can have is just generally how we feel about hearing ourselves. Um, because if you feel a bit more shy, for example, you can become quieter. And if you become quieter, it suggests sometimes that you're not as sure about what you're saying. Um, you can be less assertive. I've had that situation where I've been less assertive in German meetings. In writing, I could do it. Um, in, in the meetings at the beginning, I, I couldn't. And that in turn changes the way that people treat you or speak to you sometimes. And then that can make you, you know, that can kind of add to this feeling that, well, I don't want to do that again because I know how people are going to respond. These are worst case scenarios, but if they happen, they can um, also make you not want to speak because then you think you know what's going to happen. But actually, if you change your delivery, that will often change the way that people respond to you and that will help you. And then you don't have to deal with some of these negative responses that, that you may have encountered in the past. Um, and I, I remember when I was at school, I was about 16, I think, and we had um, a German teacher who came in. Um, she, she wasn't our teacher, but she came to help with conversation. And she said, it doesn't matter if you get everything right, Kirsty, if nobody can hear what you're saying, it's not going to help you. And um, a lot of what I was saying at that time was right because I wouldn't say it otherwise I wouldn't <laughs> take a risk and, and say something that I thought may not be right but if you're so quiet then that, that doesn't help anyone and, and you're going to have to repeat yourself anyway or people will just ignore you because they don't want to ask you to repeat yourself again so you know that 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 doesn't help um I think sometimes we, we just don't want to feel vulnerable nobody wants to feel vulnerable I didn't when I was speaking German, I, I don't now when I'm, I'm learning new languages. But at some point you have to be vulnerable because that's the only way you can develop and, and move on from this stage. So sometimes it, it helps to speak to complete strangers because you don't really care what they think about you. I know there are people that I know that I don't want to think that I'm incompetent. They, they probably don't think that I'm incompetent. It's just that I think they might. Um, so sometimes being with complete strangers is easier than talking to your colleagues or your customers or, or people that you really don't want to think you're incompetent. That's why language training can help. Or um, practicing with other people, like conversation exchanges, I often talk about them, but they can be incredibly helpful. It's somebody who whom you don't know and who wants to learn your language, that, that can work as well. Um, or you can, you can get some, some help with it and I do provide language training. So if that's something that you want to talk about, then you're welcome to contact me by email at kirsty at 
englishwithkirsty.com or podcast at englishwithkirsty.com. Um, but at the end of this podcast episode, I just wanted to give you some tips about things that you can do if you don't think that you need language training or that you, you're not looking for someone to practice with. Some things that you can do if you find that listening to yourself is holding you back or not wanting to hear yourself is holding you back from developing your language skills. So seven things to help you to get used to listening to yourself is one is talk to yourself or or an animal. I find an animal, I don't have an animal at the moment, but when I had a dog, I used to talk to her all the time anyway. So talking to her in different languages was fine because she didn't care. She was being talked to. She, she liked the interaction. She didn't understand, but that was okay because she wasn't intended to. It was to actually get used to speaking aloud. Because sometimes people say, you know, go out throughout your day thinking about things in, in English, how you would talk about them, what you would say in English. But rather than just thinking about it, if, if it's appropriate to do so and you're not, you know, wandering through a busy town, then talk to yourself as well aloud because then you're hearing the words being spoken and not just thinking about them. Uh, number two, we covered this briefly, but talk to people who won't judge, you know, people who want you to succeed and people who are invested in you being more confident and being able to speak better. Um, people who want you to do well and who will encourage you. You can really build a lot of confidence in, in having those conversations. And then when you are with people that you don't know or who may not be as invested in your success, then, then it won't feel so bad because you've already got used to listening to yourself and, and being part of conversations. Number three, read aloud. So um, if especially if you're feeling more concerned about your own language production, take, take that part out of the equation for a while. So find texts that other people have written things that you know are correct, because then you won't be thinking, oh, is this right? Is this wrong? Should I put this word here? It's irrelevant if you're reading someone else's text, but it's still giving you the opportunity to, to practice speaking, to practice your pronunciation and to practice hearing yourself speaking the language. I don't enjoy doing this, but it is useful to do it because the more you do it, the less different it will seem and, and the less you will take notice of it and you can focus on other things. Four, if you're feeling really brave, you can record yourself. I don't enjoy that at all, but you know, it, it helps you to, to get past this not wanting to hear yourself. <coughs> Five, if you're going to meetings, then talk at the beginning, because the longer that you leave it without saying anything, the harder it is to then suddenly start talking. And the harder it, the harder it is to, to break your own silence then, because you, you haven't said anything for the last 45 minutes, it's really hard to, to suddenly come in with something at the end. So even if it's just, you know, something that's not amazing, just say something quite early on, because then you, you get into the habit of, of speaking and being part of that meeting, being one of the people that's speaking in that meeting. Number six, be kind to yourself. People will rarely judge you as harshly as you judge yourself. If that's something that you struggle with, I know some people don't. Some people don't care. Some people understand that it's all part of the learning process and it doesn't bother them. And if you're one of them, then that's great. That's that's really great that you um, don't have this problem, but some people do. And for those people, generally people won't judge you as harshly as you judge yourself. They're, they're not focusing on that. They're focusing on their own problems half the time. So, so don't worry about it. And seven, don't try to be perfect because even if it's your first language, people don't say things absolutely perfectly every single time. People make mistakes in their own languages. They they change their mind about what they're saying. They it, It's not um, when you speak, it's, it's not as you would write. We often change what we want to say or maybe use a wrong, an incorrect word or something. And we don't really think about it so much in our first language. But when we start to use another language, then sometimes we can be super critical of that. And you know, most other people aren't. So um don't try to be perfect we can always be better it's always good to try and be better um but at the end of the day if, if you try so hard to be perfect that you never say anything then then you've already failed because you didn't share your knowledge or you didn't contribute or you didn't um work actively as, as part of the team you were too busy trying to be perfect 
And that sounds quite harsh, but I, I do it. So this is all of these points are things that I need to take on board as well. So for anyone who also has these kind of difficulties with mainly with speaking um, because they don't want to listen to themselves, I hope that some of these tips will help you, give you some ideas to do. It may not be comfortable, it may not be enjoyable, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. So I hope that's useful. Have a good week. And if you have any more tips like this, then you can either add them to the show notes page, which is englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast slash 191, or you can send me an email at podcast at englishwithkirsty.com. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the English with Kirsty podcast. If you have any questions or comments, my email address is kirsty at englishwithkirsty.com or you can go to www.englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast where you'll find information about the individual episodes.